Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Wait, I'm gonna remember that uh, from the 90s, the sitcom shows. They'd be like doing something and then the camera show up, they'd be like, oh, hey, <laughs> you don't talk. You talk now, you ruined it. You, you just had a beautiful have this, day in the neighborhood. You have to have this like artificial You have plastic. to break the fourth wall. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next place, so the thing about whiskey history is the growth of whiskey and the changes of things they really showed up all across the world within a very small window of a century. Right. And there's not a lot of written record on what happened first. So we're sort of guessing. Uh -huh. So bourbon started being made in Kentucky, some pro likely in the late 1700s. That's also around the time of the revolution and, right, and the change of things. Yeah. And even George Washington starts distilling whiskey on his farm. Yeah. Right? Because he had a Scottish foreman. He's a total dude. <laughs> And uh, so this is a Canadian whiskey, but it's, remember, in the early days of American history, before bourbon and corn, it was rye that was owned by America. Oh, don't get me started on that whole thing. We're Canadians call... No, 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 it's a different thing. Okay. So in the early days, it was actually rye whiskey. Like rye rye. Rye rye Not whiskey. Canadian Real rye, rye, which is... Uh, there's already enough confusing terms in whiskey Canada. Just don't... Go. You're bringing in something that doesn't matter yet. No, no, it does. We're going to get My to that. My feelings matter more than anything We're in the going world. to get to that argument in like a week and a half. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I have a calendar for Daniel Month. It's already written out. Insert rant here. Yeah. So uh, this is actually rye whiskey. This is from Highwood Distillers. They actually took aged rye. Because legally in Canada, it can't be called whiskey unless it's three years old. Are you saying what I think you're about to say? Yes. They redistilled it. Or not redistilled it, they filtered it. So they, they blended a whole bunch of different aged ryes. Right. According to rumor, some of them are uh, 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. Right? So they took old rye whiskey from Canada. Right. And this is outside Alberta, right? And so Or Calgary. What I was going to... And they... they Filtered the color out of it. What I was going to say in like the first seven seconds of this episode. Yeah. And now I won't get nearly enough credit for it. Is that on the nose, I get more coming off of this. What I would is, was going to assume, assume is a new make or a moonshine. Yeah. I get more on the nose from this than I do from a lot of like old finished whiskey. Yes, I totally agree with yeah. that. The nose jumps out of the glass. As a matter of fact, when I was sitting downstairs and sort of working my way through this one before the... Have we not done White Owl? No. I'm, I feel like we have at some point, uh, but we haven't talked about it like this. Okay. This is a part of a historical So it's journey. a different context. Yes, different I, context. I feel like we may have done White Owl. No, we did White Owl. Okay. But this is a different context. Okay. And I don't have another example of this because it's almost impossible to find a relatively uncolored direction of new make. Now, what I was looking for was a new make rye. There's not one. This is not a new make rye. Or say, there's not one I can get my hands on. Yeah. This is not new make, but it's the closest I could get. Okay. Where they filtered out all the color, which also filters out some of the flavor profiles. So how? what did they use? What was the actual filtering process? They didn't redistill it. No, there's, there's heavy filtration you can do that sort of heads the same direction as chill filtering. Okay. But it filters out everything but the clear remains of the spirit. Right on. And I don't know what the science process is behind that, but that's what they did. Continue. I just thought of Now, this. they designed this in yeah. order to be a cocktail base. Oh. oh, I could see. Well, on the nose, there's a lot of flavor here. There's a lot to work with. Now, but you know what's weird? When but I, it seems like as flavorful as I'm assuming this is going to be based on the nose alone. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's the kind of flavors, the kind of notes that is likely to play well with others. Sweet, so, caramel. Yeah, absolutely. This caramel, would be a beautiful vanilla, cocktail mix. Little, little bit of um, gosh, what almost almost malt balls on the nose. Now I would no, say. No, I take it back. No malt balls. I take no, it no, back. no. So uh, when I first picked this up, here's what's weird. What I smelled when I first picked this up is it's fall. And someone in your neighborhood is grilling something. What? Yeah, which is weird because it doesn't taste smoky yeah. or smell smoky. But there's this meaty protein to the smell of your neighbor barbecuing. Okay. That's not barbecue. It's something else. So you just need to take a shower. And I can't pin... You need to take a shower. But I wrote down a meaty protein level with uh, mixed with vanilla, citrus, and floral yeah. notes. Yeah. But there's this smell of like a fall day with the leaves changing and the way that the cold wind smells oh, in the fall. The like the creamy, kind of crisp, creamy vanilla coming off of the taste. This is caramel and butter. This is the direction of kettle corn. Yeah, right in that way. But 
It also has orange zest, mm -hmm. right? So there's like an orange, like a citrus note, but it's a slight bitter citrus note. But that bitterness only shows up like three-fourths of the way through to the aftertaste. Caramel, butter, and I'm not backing off of the vanilla. No, I, I agree. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Damn. Yeah. yeah. It's really nice. So rye is uh, conquering the north eastern section of North America in the late 1700s and early 1800s, around the same time that bourbon is getting its footing. And then simultaneously in the UK, this is the beginning of aged whiskeys starting to become. So across the world, barrel aging of spirits really started to become a dominant thing around a 50 to 100 year window, crossing from the 1700s into the 1800s. And so this is the end of our new make, although we could do moon. Actually, it's not. That's, that's not true. Tomorrow's moonshine, but it's corn-based moonshine. Merrick Fudella, Fudala, what do you, magnificent bastard, consider to be a fair price for a whiskey pour in the bar? Oh, I was thinking about this last night. Yeah, there's a lot of variables. Though. So I went to a tasting at seven grand. Right. Uh, which is a whiskey bar. There's a lot more here. Oh, sorry. Well, you put it here. Is it irrelevant? I, for, I don't remember. <laughs> I understand the drinking of the bar comes with service, with that which adds to the price, but I have a hard time justifying a 50 milliliter pour, which is, this guy's t a total badass. He put it in ounces for us. Oh! 50 milliliter pour, which is about one and a half ounces, costs between 30 to 50% of the full bottle price. Usual range Ooh. in my area. Because of that, I very, very rarely drink out of the house and usually only go for drams, which I consider too risky to buy a bottle. Yeah, so, no kidding. Yeah, no, no. Ouch. I, I get that. And that's one of the reasons why we're really excited about doing the meetup soon. So people so, can explore whiskeys without paying crazy. Yes. Yeah. If I go to a, just a random bar, <laughs> you didn't even get then I need my whiskey to be under $10 a pour. Under $10 a pour? If I just go to a random bar and they don't have an amazing whiskey selection, I'm just going to order a whiskey. Right. I'm looking for under 10 bucks. If I go to a whiskey bar, right. that like this is a bar focused on whiskey or with an extensive whiskey collection, uh -huh. then I might be willing to spend in the $20 range per pour mm -hmm. for something that's hard to get or I've never tried or that's actually kind of cool. I can't, you, you can't roll that way every night or even more than once a week or less and still maintain a reasonable budget. Kettle corn's a good note without the actual popcorn. Yeah, and there's no salt. It's just the flavoring of the, sh the sweet. Mm -hmm. Uh, flavoring of kettle corn with the roundness of butter with the roundness of butter. Yeah. Yeah, that's good man Co Isn't that cool? I would love to trick cocktails based on that. I know. I mean, it's nice enough to drink on its uh, on its own But can you believe that they're There's sourcing aged spirits and he said aged rye aged rye and then filtering all the color out because, of it because uh, You know, this would be like the last category I would guess would be a rye so, hey, they yeah. filtered a whiskey category to make this. What do you think the original category was? Rye would be my the last thing on the list. Here's what's weird about we're this so, to me. We're so far away from what I, what I imagined classical rye notes to be. In every other circumstance in the world, you find an, a clear spirit. It's because someone's trying to make money with new make while they age their stock. Yeah. This is a company that created a clear spirit right. from aged stock. Right. That's the opposite path. <laughs> they spent a lot of money on the bottle yeah. and a lot of money on the cork. Yeah. This is like a metal cork. You oh, can, yeah. You could kill a hippo with that. Well, hold on. Maybe a donkey. No, I take it back. I take it back. It looked hefty. This is this is not metal. All right. Is so it, maybe a on. small mammal. Hold, so hold. Dude, we're like in like a, like a robin, like a bird. Feel that. Really? Yeah, feel that. Oh. Super light. So that's weird because what's weird is you gr when it's in the bottle, you grab and you feel the weight of right. the bottle and right. the feeling of the cap. It looks and feels and it like, feels hefty. It, it looks and feels beautiful. But it's aluminum it, or uh, plastic. Something like that. Anyways. All right. Well, it looks beautiful. All right. Well, it could probably still kill something. It's really the main point when it comes to any cork. <laughs> what, what can you can kill, you kill with, with it? it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for friends. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, May you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.